Nursery rhymes aren't all visions of imaginative lands and pudding pie. Look closely and you will notice the starving animals, nose-eating monsters of nocturne, and women being held captive in pumpkin prisons, tails lopped off with carving knives, and the moral of most every story is a cautionary tale of disfigurement and death. <laughs> These horrific images are just the remnants, though. Mother Goose rhymes have been significantly sanitized over the years. Earlier versions were chock full of atrocities and gruesome methods of choosing human sacrifices in a sing-song style. What once seemed like harmless rhyming fun for generations came under close scrutiny in the 1950s as such children's literature became questionable. Knowing the verses contained unsavory tales of domestic violence and murder for misdeed, many iconic nursery rhymes were modified, but luckily, not all of this old literary culture has been lost. Here are some examples of nursery rhymes that don't make the cut in children's books today. There once was a man so wise he jumped into a bramble bush and scratched out both his eyes. And when he saw his eyes were out and reason to complain, he jumped into a quicksack hedge and scratched them out again. Old Father Longlegs can't say his prayers. Take him by the left leg and throw him down the stairs. And when he's at the bottom, before he has long lane, Take him by the right leg and throw him up again. There was an old woman. Her name was Peg. Her head was of wood and she wore a cork leg. The neighbors all pitched her into the water. Her leg was drowned first and her head followed after. There was a lady all skin and bone. Sure, such a lady was never known. It happened upon a certain day, this lady went to the church to pray. When she came to the church stile, there she did rest a while. When she came to the church yard, there the bells so loud she heard. When she came to the church door, she stopped to rest a little more. When she came to the church within, the parson prayed against pride and sin. On looking up, on looking down, she saw a dead man upon the ground. And from his nose and to his chin, the worms crawled out, the worms crawled in. Then she said to the parson, Shall I be so when I am dead? Oh yes, oh yes, the parson said. You will be so when you are dead. There was a man. He went and jumped into a paper bag. The paper bag was too narrow, so he jumped into a wheelbarrow. The wheelbarrow took fire. He jumped into a cow buyer. The cow buyer was too nasty. He jumped into an apple pasty. The apple pasty was too sweet, so he jumped into Chesterless Street. Chesterless Street was full of stones. He fell down and broke all his bones. I charge my daughters, every one, to keep good house when I am gone. You and you, and especially you, or else I'll beat you black and blue. The first nursery rhymes can be traced back to the 14th century, when gossip about current events could be punishable by death. This gave rise to the apparent merrymaking 
of these ditties on the streets. While the bubonic plague ravaged England, peasants used rhymes to realize their equality among the upper class and made retaliatory songs to be spread and shared. Under the guise of children's entertainment, many rhymes were encoded with secret messages of truth or protest when it wasn't allowed. Other nursery rhymes don't seem to pertain to any certain message at all. But within their darkness and absurdity, some seem to convey warnings or common sense wisdom that was passed down through the generations. Let's take a closer look at some of these rhymes many of us grew up with today. Probably one of my favorite possible origins for Ring Around the Rosie is the connection to the Great Plague in London back in 1665. Ring Around the Rosie, a pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, they all fall down. <laughs> the telltale symptoms of bubonic plague patients was a red ring-shaped rash which inspired the first line. It was believed the disease was carried by bad smells, so people and even special plague doctors kept pockets full of fresh herbs or posies to combat the stench of the disease. The ashes ashes line is thought to represent the required cremation of all bodies that perished from the plague. Another one of my personal favorite rhymes with possible historical ties is Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? With cockle shells and silver bells and pretty maids all in a row. In all probability, this verse is not about a young lady planting a real garden, like in this classic Renoir painting. Its reference is into Queen Mary Tudor, also known as Bloody Mary. She obtained this nickname for her aggressive attempts to reverse English reform. If you've seen one of my previous videos here on torture devices designed for women, this might look familiar. It is the cockle shell and silver bells referenced in this rhyme and was a favorite torture device utilized by Queen Mary. Additionally, her maids all in a row does not refer to her ladies-in-waiting, but a cemetery garden of bodies slain during her reign. Pretty, pretty maids all in a row. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. This poem originated in France. The characters were not just farm children out doing chores though. Instead, the characters refer to King Louis XIV and his fallen queen, Marie Antoinette. Jack was beheaded or lost his crown first. Then Jill came tumbling after, during the Reign of Terror of 1793. I also have a video about their executions here in YouTube, in case you missed it. We shall now go back to the Tudor era and investigate some controversial origins of another couple of well-known classics. The Tudor period was rife with excitement, treacherous betrayals, family dysfunction, and complicated webs of dire dynamics. London Bridge is falling down. Falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. And whom do you presume such a fallen fair lady would be? The forsaken Anne Boleyn, second wife of King Henry VIII. She was wrongly accused of adultery and incest, and ultimately executed for high treason against her husband, the insatiable king. The poem continues. Take a key and padlock her up, 
my fair lady. Anne Boleyn was imprisoned in a cell within the Tower of London prior to her beheading. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare, so the poor little doggy had none. This poem is highly symbolic, reputedly about Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, who notoriously interfered with the marriage of King Henry to Anne Boleyn. The dog and the bone in this rhyme refer to the divorce of the king to his first wife, Catherine, which Wolsey denied. The cupboard is a reference to the Catholic Church, with Wolsey being Old Mother Hubbard, the stick in the mud. The divorce resulted in the break with Rome and the formation of the English Protestant Church. But hey, do you know this guy? Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? Do you know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane? You might be asking yourself how this simple ditty could go wrong. Well, of course there really was a street called Drury Lane in London, but at the time it was kind of a seedy part of town. Peasants, drunks, brothels. But English muffins were really Oi, sold on the corners. But the story goes that a boy was abused as a child and he got rewarded every time this happened. He grew up to become a serial killer who lured boys into the bakery with a muffin on a string. Once lured inside, they would be assaulted and raped and then murdered. Parents created this rhyme as warning to their children. Incidentally, Hansel and Gretel was also made to warn children about the dangers of strangers and the reality of the Muffin Man. Built in 1594, Her Majesty's Prison, Wakefield, in Yorkshire, United Kingdom, is home to a notable nursery rhyme. It seems the original exercise yard had a mulberry tree around which female inmates used to exercise. As the tree grew, so did the verses and the song's popularity. The familiar words are, Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, this cold and frosty morning. The Wakefield Prison is still in operation today as a maximum security unit for men. The original mulberry tree finally died in 2017. It was removed May of 2019. Cuttings from it were taken in the 1980s in hopes to regrow its legacy someday and replant it again. Besides that, there seems to be no sinister connotation to this rhyme that was created out of sheer boredom by a bunch of prisoners ages ago. The final rhyme I recited growing up every night before bed used to haunt me and fill my brain with questions. It's the classic children's bedtime prayer and a tapestry of this poem hung on my bedroom wall. It says, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, show me the path of love to take. Maybe it was because of the high childhood mortality rate that the importance a child should know that he could die in his sleep was beneficial. Nonetheless, as a toddler, it kind of set me on edge to recall my own mortality each night before the lights went out. So I'll say this, despite some of the sinister origins of these nursery rhymes and histories, I'll admit some still harbor solid proof of wisdom and bring back some of the freedom only a child can know.